Hi and welcome. I'm Iris Ben Ruby, your host, and welcome to the Ready for Love series. I'm really excited today to have a new guest. I brought Linda Bloom. Welcome. I'm so delighted to be here with you. Well, I'm thrilled to have you on because not only are you a psychotherapist and marriage counselor, but you have been married for 52 years and you're still madly in love. <laughs> Uh -huh. We're really enjoying our relationship now, but it hasn't always been a walk in the park. So we had some rough spots, but we're both really good students and we paid attention and we got some good help and we have learned so much. So we try to channel all that through to our students and our therapy clients. You know, and that's such an important message for people to hear. Often you look at couples that are madly in love and they're like, why do they have it and I don't? but it actually takes something to get there. It takes a lot of work and people do know that. It's all over the media and the women's magazines, relationships take work, but people are really in the mystery. There's a lot of confusion about what is the work? And you know, people know you need to have good communication, but sometimes they don't know the technology of good communication, that it's not only just speaking, effectively, but it's deep listening. We call it committed listening. And being able to speak our truth without blame and judgment, because people tend to get backed up and argumentative and avoidant when we speak our truth, when it's got blame in it. And so how to drop down under the irritation and the resentment to get to the vulnerable feelings about feeling hurt mm -hmm. and also feeling afraid and what it is that we really need. And that's really good communication. The other thing that we find is people don't really know enough about repair. Mm -hmm. And all the happiest couples that we know are champions of repair. And these are skills that we really need in the time of COVID because people are stressed. And so they're often got a shorter fuse because they're stressed. And so things that would roll off before, you know, they find themselves having more arguments. So we're, we're here to offer people the technology of transformation. While we're in a crisis, we might as well mine it for the good news in it. You know, there's really some gifts in the crisis, not to deny that it's difficult, but there really are opportunities right alongside the difficulties. Yeah, I wanna talk about the opportunities, but before we go there, I want to ask you, what have you noticed as a couples therapist, the impact of COVID on the couples that either you work with or you hear about? Well, <laughs> we hear about one of the pair is really introverted and having the kids home from school and not going to work, they don't get a time, enough time alone, which can make them cranky. And the extroverts aren't partying down with their friends and having enough contact they can't go to the bar to have a beer they can't you know meet friends for dinner as easily as they used to they uh, are feeling deprived that they can't have a halloween party this year and it makes them cranky so we we find that's one of the things the introverts and the extroverts aren't getting enough of what they need and it stresses them we also find that there's usually one in the pair that's more conservative doesn't want to risk doesn't want to take any chances, won't go to the barber, won't go to the hairdresser. They're getting wild and woolly and deciding they like their hair long, you know, and the other one is riskier. I'm not making a value judgment about that, but they sometimes are clashing because the person who's more conservative may feel that the riskier person is, you know, just a little too on the wild, irresponsible edge and the person who is riskier may feel the other person's just too uptight and making a big to, to, to do about it. We also find that as much as we love and adore our children, most of us didn't go into early childhood education because we didn't want to be with them all day long. And having the kids learn virtually, it's harder. They need some guidance, they need support. And, you know, it's almost like some of these parents feel like they have to homeschool their kids and they really want a break from the children. 
So those are a few of the things that are coming up. And it's, it's difficult for people. So the opportunity, of course, is to speak openly and honestly with each other and support each other to brainstorm how to reduce the stress, how to spell each other with the kids, how to meet somewhere more on the conservative end because that's the person that has more fear. And let those introverts go behind the closed door and have plenty of time to themselves and the extroverts need to Zoom like mad with all their family and friends if they can't be with them in person. So let's look at the second characteristic. You talked about the conservatives and the risk takers. All of us live in our reality as though it's the truth. Even though it's a truth for us, we believe it's right. the truth. Like this amount of risk taking is responsible. This amount is not responsible, whatever that continuum is. What do you counsel those people that are finding themselves at different ends of the spectrum? Keep negotiating for your needs. If you feel too restrained, see if you can appeal to the more conservative partner that you're going to wear your mask, you're going to social distance, if you bring things into the house, you'll spray them down with disinfectant, that you're not going to be reckless. And that the person that needs more freedom, they, they need to have that respected so they don't have too much restraint. But the person who's more on the conservative end, they've got a valid point too. There's a lot at stake here. There's a lot at risk here. You could get sick. You could infect me. Somebody could die here. And there are a lot of people who weren't on the conservative end who are in the hospital now, you know, gasping for air that they can't breathe. So I'm always encouraging all of the couples that I work with to talk about what they need to have peace of mind and to go negotiate for their needs with a lot of goodwill because some of these couples are pretty polarized, you know, they're not near each other, but to try to understand each other's point of view and not be controlling and not be demanding and not be insistent and don't, definitely don't shame them and blame them and make them bad and wrong. See if you can come to learning and understanding and that's a lot. And that goes for all differences, learning and understanding. Yeah, what I love about what you said is two things. One is there's validity to both sides. That's right. The conservative knows there's a lot of risk. The extrovert or the person who likes to take risks knows that they need this for their well-being. So it's not about right and wrong. And what you're inviting people to do is to not talk about the activity, but also talk about their feelings, how it That's makes right. them feel. That's right. Everybody needs to feel free and everybody needs to feel safe and secure. And there is usually one in the pair that's the stand. I call them the freedom fighter, you know? And there's one that's a little bit more on the other end of the spectrum, no right or wrong about it, you know? And the connectors are very careful to make sure that the relationship is protected and their fears about something happening that could damage the relationship. Of course, the most severe damage to the relationship is if one of them died. Mm -hmm. But there are other th damages to the relationship short of something such, you know, earth shakings as a death, just if one of them was to get sick. Mm -hmm. That could really um, cause a lot of heartache. Mm -hmm. And so to stay in conversation do you know with that intention to learn about how do you see it what is it that you know you could stretch a little bit what is it that i could do to stretch a little bit into your world how could we meet this doesn't have to be divisive yeah and what i'm hearing is and you touched on it earlier is about being able to listen without needing to agree and without blame you know, that's revolutionary thought for, for a lot of people, that listening is so powerful. People feel respected, they feel honored, they feel trusted. And it isn't necessarily agreement that is the goal. It's the understanding and the learning that comes from listening. So I find myself saying that a lot when I'm teaching and when I'm um, working with couples, that just understanding. Do you see that you 
you understand each other's point of view in a deep and meaningful way. That's connecting. You know, the, the happiest couples have areas where they are, don't reconcile. They have issues that never reconcile. Doesn't mean that they don't keep try, trying to see if they can move a little bit more and lighten up a little bit more about it, but every couple has those areas. And, you know, the, the liberal and the conservative about COVID may be one of those areas where they never really stand united together but they can stand close enough together. And the conservative is just gonna to have to breathe and relax themselves and use some self-talk as we'll, we'll probably be safe. And the person who's at the other end said, well, I'm not gonna be able to do everything that I wanna do because I wanna protect the well-being of my partner and it's too crazy making for him or her. So I'm gonna cut back a little bit. I'm not gonna sell myself out, but I'm gonna adjust some as a gift to my partner. Yeah. Beautiful. I'm not going to sell myself out, but I'm going to step a little bit out of my comfort zone as a gift to my partner. That's right. Yeah. And what goodwill that creates in a relationship. Makes all the difference. And when people negotiate the differences that are inflamed during the pandemic because people are tense, we're in the void, you know, we're so much in the unknown. We don't know if we're gonna go back to the kind of normal we had before. And even if we did, we don't know how long it's gonna take. It could be several more months, it could be a year. And we are in the don't know, and that's, that's disconcerting for a lot of people. Uh, some people are uh, easier about being in the chaos. But we have a friend who has a t-shirt that says, give chaos a chance. <laughs> you know, it's a very creative way of being, but um, it's stressful for a lot of people. So we don't know how long it's going to take. And if we can practice our good communication skills, our good negotiation skills, we will be empowered even after things normalize. Do you know, we can plug in any challenge. We can plug in any issue and see you know, declaring my intention, the committed listening, the uh, wanting to understand, bringing curiosity and wonder, those are magic elixirs for couples communication. And if we can practice during the pandemic, man, we're, we're good to go after the pandemic. We can handle the issues that come up. All right, so I think a good place to go is I wanna talk about repair now. Repair can happen while you're dating or it can happen when you're married. So let's talk about what is repair and then we'll talk maybe about how to create repair, what, what it is and what it isn't. Uh, thank you for asking because this is so critical and a lot of people are, are short on how to do a good repair. The trust falls down, they're disconnected, um, and they don't know how to get back to the place where they're connected and the trust is higher. There's a, a big poster of a spiritual teacher, Swami Satchidananda, in a loincloth crouching on a surfboard on a wave. And the caption is, you can't stop the waves from coming, but you can learn to surf. That I got goosebumps. I love that. Isn't that rich? So it's a powerful teaching that life is going to throw us challenges, going to give us problems. We're going to get a lot of we don't want. We're not going to get a lot that we do want. And so we're challenged how we're going to surf it. Sometimes trust is going to fall. People are going to be hurt. People are going to be disappointed. People are going to get angry. The key piece is to take responsibility and not be in the victim seat. He's doing it to me again. She's doing it to me. If we can see that we have something to do with it, that's empowering because the victim seat is disempowering. We feel like we don't have power to influence. And if we can come from, I may have something to do with this. Maybe they talked in that harsh tone of voice because they were threatened by me. If they're being defensive, I may have something to do with it. Look for our part. 
it's not so neat as it's 50-50 when there's a breakdown. Maybe it's 70-30, maybe it's 60-40, you know, maybe it's 80-20. But if we can look at the part that we play, we're coming from a powerful place. If we can say, I'm sorry that I had a cutting edge on my voice, that puts the other person at ease. And they can join us. Well, I wasn't so diplomatic in the way I brought that to your attention either. Do you see? They can both take responsibility and they can apologize for the part that they played in the breakdown. And when a constructive, sincere, full apology is made, it often invites people to be forgiving and to let go and this trust is restored. So that's an essential skill that every couple who aspires to have a high functioning relationship has to acquire and they'll get more chances to practice than they ever wanted to <laughs> because right does happen. The waves keep coming and we get chances to get to become champions of repair. And I love how you phrase that because underneath that, the number one thing that we need, especially from our romantic partners, is to be heard. That's right. So if you Not agreed with necessarily, but heard with respect. I understand why you would feel that way. With your background, with your areas of sensitivity, with the part that I played in it, I could totally understand why you would feel the way you do. I can understand why you would need from me what you need from me. And I want to show you the kind of respect that I have for you by owning my part. Sometimes people are afraid to own their part because they think that that translates into their partner as they're taking the whole rap for the breakdown. But it's not. It's just, I have a part to play in this. And that doesn't, you know, um, get you off the hook for the part that you play. Do you know? I, I would like to hear if you see that you had something to do with this. Let's, let's learn together here. Because when you go into blame or when your partner goes into blame, the automatic thing is to go into defense. You can't help it. You know, it's just a knee jerk reaction. I'm not talking literally that people are physically violent, but if somebody kicks you, you want to kick them back. And so this is counterintuitive to do this. Yes. When you feel like somebody's coming at you with a strong energetic and with you statements, if they're blaming and shaming, you want to fight them back. I need to drop down. I need to come from my highest self. I know that I feel hurt because I was falsely accused. I want to report out my experience. Not my defensiveness, not my reactivity. My re response is my experience that hurt me. And when that happens, and it's happened so many times, it scares me that we're not going to get a grip on this. And it's keeping our relationship from being the greatest that it can be. And I've got a commitment and intention to have a great relationship. While we're at it, why don't we go for the gold and have a really good one? Yeah, and that's so important because you're talking about what really is your top priority. Is it being right or is it about having a great relationship? And you're right when you say or. People don't want to get that sometimes, that they can be right or they can be happy. They can be right or they can have a great relationship. They want it both ways. And you know what's true is some people would rather be right. Yeah, That breaks my heart because... You know, one of the courses that my husband and I teach is called Thriving, and it's about happiness. And so we've done quite a thorough survey of the literature to see what all the experts in the positive psychology field are saying. They're all saying the same thing. You get the biggest back bang for your buck in the happiness department from your closest relationships. And if you're married or you're in a committed partnership, that's where you get the biggest boost for your happiness. And so when people settle for being right, I say, oh, Han, you're really ripping yourself off here. You're going against your own best interests because we all want to be really happy, as happy as we can be. 
And if you're busy trying to insist you're right, you're keeping your own happiness for being in the, in the thrive zone. And I want to go back to something that you said. You talked about how there are gifts in what we've just been through. Could you touch more on that? Yeah, we've been through and we've been through for several months and we're still going through. One of the gifts that uh, I hear from people is it's really shaking them to think more deeply about their lives, about what really matters to them and who really matters to them. Some people, you know, they're crying on their Zoom calls with me because they're missing their family that lives in another state and they're not comfortable to fly, understandably. And they're trying to make do with Zoom and Skype and FaceTime and more phone calls. It's not the same as physically being there. But people are really, uh, a lot of people, understanding what's most important to them. There are a lot of people who are out of work and they used to think it might be nice to be out of work, but they've been out of work long enough that they miss working. They miss being productive. They miss being in the workplace physically with the other coworkers because of the social aspect is a really important part of work. So it's no small thing to be faced with what is really important to me. I've talked to other people who say, their life is more simplified. It was more hectic and busy before. And this has forced them to slow down. The introverts love this. <laughs> They're living a quieter lifestyle. One woman said to me, you know, in the lockdown, I didn't go outside. One day I went out to walk and I didn't have any makeup on. I went out in my pajamas. She felt so free that she didn't have to live up to the expectations that she put on herself before. I know for me personally, I have a forest only about 12 houses away from my house. And I've been in this house for three years until the pandemic. I've never been in the forest once everything slowed down and I couldn't go to my dance classes. My partner couldn't go to his tea teaches running. My son couldn't go to hockey or yoga. And we started to walk through the forest. We started to cook together and clean together. For me, that was the gift in it and slowing down and doing the family and more connected to nature. How beautiful is that? And I've heard this from other people and it's true for me too. When the gym closed, our gym is open now, but we don't feel comfortable going back yet. We were forced to have other forms of exercise and we've been hiking in the forest too. And I've heard from other people how precious it is and how they have been reducing their stress by being out in nature. This is one of the other gifts of the pandemic is when people had a low grade infection, they could keep going to work. I use that as the metaphor. Having the pandemic made the, the infection spike and what they were able to get away with before they weren't able to get away with. Like, communication skills in their relationship, like stress reduction. They have been forced to find ways, whatever they are, like being in nature or Zoom calls to be able to feel connected with each other that bring their stress down. I've talked to people who are taking two baths a day because hot water does it for them. People who hadn't been motivated to journal or meditate before are doing that now because they need it in the stress of the pandemic. One of the other gifts that I think is profound is realizing that there's no us in them. There's only us. And the virus knows no borders. It's hitting every country all over the world. And I'm very hopeful that people are waking up about our interconnectedness, Technicon calls it interbeing. Thich Nhat Hanh's a Buddhist scholar that, and teacher that I admire. And hopefully this will position us well to do good by the environment and honor Mother Nature with this realization that so many people are having of our interconnectedness. All right, Linda, I know that you also have some free gifts for our viewers. Could you speak to those? 
I do. I want these people to come to my website because we got all kind of free stuff there. And there's three free eBooks, one on sexuality, one on conflict management. And the third one is the 10 most important things that my husband and I've learned since we got married. In addition to the free eBooks, if they come to the website, they'll see we've got 600 blogs in the blogosphere and over 100 YouTube videos. So people can get all kinds of free goodies from us. Beautiful. And right here, right below the video is a link where you can jump in, take advantage of Linda's free offer. And with that, I want to say, Linda, thank you for the time that you've given us, for all of this knowledge that you've shared, and for the difference you make in the world. Oh, thank you. I appreciate your having me, and I get it that you get me. It's nice to be gotten. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that in. That feels so warm. Thank you. Um, all the best. Stay safe.